Kibby and Finnegan Show, episode number 38. And by the schedule, Michael, by the schedule, this is the last show that will air before I am in the presence of Cooter and his last stand. Oh, that's right. The last, man, do I have stuff to tell you today. The last three days have been planning, prepping. There's a real General Lee there sitting there waiting for me. Did I tell you I'll be in the state while you're there mm-hmm. i will be near roanoke while you're there and i cannot go okay here's something else to lay on you uh, uh lethal shutter productions a uh, good video crew that does a lot of uh drag race filming they, they do a lot of stuff like this have for a few years they're going to be where you are saturday night shooting some at video. the airport uh no at the drag strip on I'm saturday not going to drag strip. oh aren't they're going to half mile strip I thought that's what you were doing. Okay, never mind. That's what they're doing. Wait, 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 wait. You just contradiction yourself. There are no half mile drag strips, but what there are There's a half mile airport. event at an airport. What there are are airport runways that you can drag race on. They're not prepped. It's half mile long racing on an airport runway. That's where I'm going to. So it sounds like I think you're right. They will be there. It's that's what they sent me some footage and yeah, I mean they're they're definitely people on runways because they're <laughs> runways aren't flat. Um, you know, they're floating up, floating down. The guy that just ran his quarter, oh, 220 <laughs> something. It looks scary. Uh, cause yeah, the elevation does change on a runway, but that's where they're going to be. It is it. It's a drag race on a runway. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah. The guy in the Corvette. Mm-hmm. Crazy man. He's a, do you know him? No, but I've gone half mile racing on airport runways before. And like you said, whew, not smooth, not flat. So to go 225 in a Corvette on a surface that I would I would wager changes elevation at least three feet throughout the run at least the in car video that they that they shoot so they they have cameras kind of everywhere mm-hmm. uh, you I mean he's strapped in but you see the car go yeah at oh, at over 200 and I mean like Man. oh god okay anyway they're gonna be there Saturday <clears throat> on their way home. They're going through Cooter's Last Stand. So they're coming on Sunday, and they're going to help us shoot some video there. Of course they are. Of course they get to go. Yes. So (laughs) what I'm telling you is if you get sick or you have to call in late, (coughs) you you have friends to join. And Mr. Dog may have lined up a real General Lee. America. Okay, let's move on here. Did you know OJ got parole? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I'm no danger to pull a gun on anybody. <laughs> you know, I never have in my life. I've never been accused of it in my life. Uh, nobody's ever accused me of pulling any weapon on them. OJ got parole. It's like oh, Al Capone going to jail on tax evasion. <sighs> you know, he but, was... you know, here's the crazy part about that whole deal. He has avoided paying the family of the people he you know, allegedly murdered. He's, yeah, he's never paid, right? Not a dime. They say they've gotten one percent of the thirty-three million uh, judgment that they got in the civil suit hmm. because he's hid his assets, um, including he wrote that book that with the, with the horrible title that said "If I Did Invasions It: Investions of a Killer." If I did it, you know, which is just insanity. What's wrong you know? with this country? Oh, dude, he's such a dirtbag. So he gets out, right? And he's on parole for five years. And he may even get to move home to his mansion in Florida, where he will get a $25,000 a month pension from the NFL that they cannot touch. Why? Imagine that, dude. I, I don't know how that works, but I was reading in the news that that's his pension. They cannot touch it. They can go after the other stuff, which they've been unsuccessful in doing, but they can't touch his pension. So he'll be living large on parole. Um, yeah. Yeah. Man, OJ's on the streets. I I have little confidence that this is going to end well. You think? Uh, think he still has the Bronco? Think he'll cruise that around. Oh, I thought it was the other guys. I didn't think it was his. Al Kaylin. Al. And I thought That's it was it. in a museum. I have no and idea. I think it did change hands. Uh, maybe at an auction or something. I thought it was kind of a big deal. Oh, wow. You know, the other thing that's really kind of depressing, and this will be the last depressing thing I bring up. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know the guy that, uh, it's before my time, but the guy that killed John Lennon, uh, you know, he was a, I don't remember his name, but he was a fan. And hours before 
uh, he killed John Lennon. John Lennon actually autographed, I think it was an album for him. That album uh, was auctioned off, I don't know, five or six years ago for like 800 grand. And it, it's going up per auction like right now, I think today, for one and a half million dollars. Who buys that? That's crazy. That's it's very more stuff. I don't yeah. like this stuff at all. Can can we change gears here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's do something else. Sorry. All right. You want to um, cut that whole segment out? Was that a segment? Uh, <laughs> may as well be. <laughs> you are noticeably uncomfortable. I, I just don't. Eh, I don't like people getting something that really changed when I became a father, especially, is that uh, when I hear the news <clears throat> uh, about uh, children getting harmed, for example. I, I, uh, it, uh, it upsets me like a lot. Oh, me, me too, but we're not going there at all. I know That's we aren't. We're, we're, not, we're not going there. <laughs> but when I think of John Lennon getting killed, he just had a little boy. You know, uh, was it Adrian uh, Lennon? So, okay. so all of a sudden, this little boy has no dad because some nutcase decided okay. to do something stupid. So I suppose that that kind of triggers it all in me. And, oh, I got, I got a reminder today of, uh, of somebody that died about five years ago that I, I really loved and, it just popped up in my Facebook feed, so I guess that was uh, oh, on the brain. I want to move on. <laughs> uh, general Lee's. General Lee's. Okay, oh, speaking good. of General Lee's, for those of you at Cooter's Last Stand, uh, I'm going to call you. Uh, many people have written in. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of um, our listeners there, so we're going to call this the the Kibbe and Finnegan Show News Team, and because of that, I have an intro for them. Check this out. If I'm going to do this. I'll need my news team at my side. News team! Assemble! Hera? So. Oh. Hi. Didn't see you there. We've been here literally the entire time you have. I'm a little embarrassed. So, Kibby and Finnegan news team, email me to be by the as soon as you hear this show. In the subject, put uh, Cooter's Last Stand, something like that, so I can identify it. I would love to meet you guys uh, while we're at the event. Um, I'll get you all. I'll bring Finnegan autograph stuff. I'm sure I can do that. <laughs> I, I know a lot of you. Uh, He's going to forge my name on everything. Uh, I've, I've, I've got a couple of your signatures on something. I'm sure I can do it. So <laughs> I'll have plenty of FSM gear. It's 90 bucks a hat. No problem on that. <laughs> Anything you want. But I really would like to meet you. And, There's um, also a group on out there if you all want to meet Kibby, you know, because he, he won't just stand around and let you talk to him. He's kind of a big deal. But uh, you can get a group on online for that. It's yeah, be yeah $25. $25 a person is, is what I pay. But. Um, uh, John Matola. John Matola is a listener. Okay, John is the guy that uh, emailed us a long time ago and said, "I'm restoring this charger. Should I paint it like a General Lee?" And we said, "Yeah, do what you want." He'll, he'll, I believe he'll be there with his really beautiful charger. So I, I want to see this guy and I want to see this car. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I, I am bummed that you can't come. Uh, but let me, let me oh see my. if, let me see if I can um, persuade you. Actually, let me see if Cooter or Enos can persuade you. Here, here's Enos trying to persuade you. Here we go. Hey y'all, this is Sonny Schroyer, Enos of the Dukes of Hazard. Hey, y'all come out to Cooter's Last Stand. It's gonna be in Luray, Virginia, July 29th and 30th. July 29th and 30th, that's right around the corner, y'all. Be there. Now, Cooter's and the country. We love you. We love you, and we'll see you there. <laughs> oh man, I'm so bummed out. How do I convince the producer and people that own Roadkill that it is humanly possible to come to cooter's last stand because we'll be in the state and film there and blur out every single rebel flag <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i know How you do can I convince do some of that because literally a stupid flag is what's stopping me from going to cooter's last stand can't you, can't you take a vacation day no, I'm working, dude. I got to go. Well, and, and it's hard to call it work, but I'm literally filming Roadkill in Virginia at an airport. And we're we're going half mile racing in an El Camino that we found on Craigslist instead of going to Cooter's Last Inn. And I, I'm saying detour. We should take a detour, you know. People get lost, up. Mike. It happens. I know, but they can't get lost and show it on video. They just can't. One more pull. 
Hey y'all, it's Ben Jones, Crazy Cooter coming at you, inviting you and yours to join me, Miss Alma, and the entire cast of the Duke's Hazard for Cooter's Last Stand, July 29th and 30th. Stars, cars, music, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Wait, he said the entire cast. Tom Wopat, John Schneider? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Catherine Bach. Everybody that's alive, I guess I should say. Oh, man. I, I, I'm getting media passes. Just telling you. <sighs> Okay, we'll Look, I'm through. a Christian. I know how guilt works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lay this on for. Uh, I'll text you. There's it. nothing to do with guilt. You're just making me, you know, jealous. That's all. Okay. Which is very unchristian. What are you doing? You have to go save about 27 Hail Marys for all the just, you know, jealousy you put in me. Oh, I don't know how to do those. Did are you Catholic at all? Is that the sort of? <laughs> I don't okay. know how to do them I, either. I don't. <laughs> I live across the street from a Catholic church. I I would I uh, run my car in their parking lot all the time when I'm testing stuff. Good people. <clears throat> Donuts well, for God. All right. Like it. I've tested a lot of brakes in there. That's just. It's a Sending great big smoke thing. signals <laughs> to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. Nice. Uh, cool. Well, yeah. If you're going, shoot me an email, Robert at the dot com. Uh, no, I won't have any Finnegan gear with me, but I know where you can get it. Uh, F- FSM Garage is that right? That's Dot com. That's yeah. where that's where I get all of my Finnegan gear. Uh, I got it from me, but okay. yeah, well, you're, <laughs> you're the person I know with it. So, <laughs> alrighty. Uh, last week, I uh, I told you, and maybe we, I think we shared in the show. I went on the Murph and Andy show, KXNO Radio. Yeah, I listened to it. That was great. Man, it was so much fun. Turns out you know a lot about cars. They uh, or you know how to operate Google. I, yeah, more more of that. What was kind of neat to find out is that uh, how we do this show is almost exactly how they do it. There's one guy with a set of producer notes, Poorly. and and the other guy is you. He's just cold, shooting off the hip, like and, and nobody knows. No, Mike has nothing in front of him here. He's he's doing this you know, at, as the crow flies. So my laptop is sitting on my toolbox and I'm on a roll away in my garage. <laughs> it, it was really fun. Uh, I got a little seasick watching their producer though, because we do this recorded and then, you know, Bernie, our audio producer, and then, then Kirk and Michael, the video guys, they put this all together after the fact. It's right. pretty close to what we're doing right now, but it's not exactly the same. Mm-hmm. They're doing it live and their producer. I was, I sat in with the producer during their second hour of their show so whenever they have audio drops, you know, they kind of cue it up. He knows what's coming and they point through the producer's window. He drops it in there. So I was sitting in there. He was producing their show, posting the first hour podcast. He had a live feed coming at four on an ISDN line that he was talking to. He had one earbud in because he's a third voice in their show, which I'd love. I'd love it with Bernie. We're on the show while we're doing this. Yeah. And then he was talking to somebody else in a control room who was patching a server. And he had a full conversation with me. He was doing all of this, and, and, and it never stopped. He did it for like 30. I I eventually left. He was still doing it. I almost threw up. Does like, he get tr- five paychecks? Because it sounds like he's doing five jobs. He's uh, He started there as an entry-level guy, a board operator. Then he became a, um, a producer of their show, and now he's the program director of that radio station. And he's on 33, 34 mm-hmm. years old. But it was it was cool. Someday, though, when I when I left there, I remember thinking... Man, we're gonna do this live someday. Oh, this, live this, would be great. This is us how in the we, same room would be awesome. That we're gonna get there. I'll even put pants on. What do you have on now? Not the pants. Shorts. Get that picture out of your brain. I dare you. I'll bet your butt is just furry as I'll get out too. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> just gross. Yuck. Uh, dude, I'm part yeti. <laughs> well, anyway, the benefit uh, of that is when I'm like 80 years old during winter time i'll sit on the toilet seat and won't be cold we got one of the toilet seats it's a it's a it's not a cold thing but it's an auto kind of has a dampener in it so it doesn't <laughs> you know slam shut man that's nice at two in the morning like when you go does take it, a leak and you just tap it and it kind of slowly closes does it automatically sense when a male enters the room and lifts itself up no it doesn't because that's the technology we need think about this you ever notice Women always get mad if you don't put the seat down. When are they going to start putting the seat up when they're done for us? I think it should go both ways. It is funny you mention this because the Japanese toilets, have you ever seen a Japanese toilet? 
ever been to Japan. These things are high tech. Uh, you sit down on a Japanese toilet, um, and it will operate all of the things you want to do there, except wipe your butt. Like it'll sit down, it'll warm water in a separate container for spraying of your butt after you're done pooping. There are different buttons to push for cleansings, and then when you're done, uh, you wipe your butt and you leave. I kind of hate it when you drop a bomb and you get backsplash. So I, I don't know if I want them spraying my butt. Oh, well, this is like their version of the bidet, I think. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Um, it's also a butt sprayer. I've oh. all of I've read about this. I, I don't know Fancy about it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been to Japan? Have you done this? I'm just really? telling you. Do the they Jap- give you towels? No, uh, normal toilet weird. paper. That's weird. The Japanese know things. Maybe. New segment. This what day in history. This day in history. Actually, an old segment. Uh, and this is Wait. actually this is actually yesterday in history. And this has this has a something in it you're gonna like. Is July this another 20th. segment we'll do once and then not do next. next no, time? We, we've done this day in history before, so this this is on its like third go around here. Uh, but this day in history, July twentieth, nineteen sixty nine. This happened. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, walk on the moon. Yeah. So allegedly was, real. Allegedly real. Talking to my kids about also my parents were married on the same day six years prior but I was talking to my kids about this and they, I said 1969 what happened on July 20th 1969 and they said is that when the General Lee was made like <laughs> those are my kids Very good. right there okay Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the astronauts that went down to the moon in the lunar lander circling the moon was the third astronaut Michael Collins in the Apollo uh, the command module. Michael Collins' wife was, uh, I think, Phyllis, something like that. Guess what her maiden name was, though? Diller. Mm-mm. Oh. Although that would have been hilarious. <laughs> it, it was Finnegan. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. Man. So you might, you might be related somehow to an astronaut. I read somewhere, and I don't know if this is just fake Facebook news, as most things are. Uh, I read that after the moon thing, Buzz Aldrin was kind of a failure. He was like a Cadillac salesman, got divorced once or twice, like couldn't sell a car, got fired. Like, you know, he didn't, he wasn't replicating the success that he had on the moon, hmm. basically. But, I, you know, again, I don't know if that's true. I haven't researched it because, like Kibby said, I'm ill prepared for these things. I'm not ill prepared. It was a compliment, doing stuff off the cuff. Oh, we, we go to the Oshkosh Air Show every year. So I've been going to this, uh, this air show with my dad since I was 10. It's in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's kind of like SEMA uh, for general aviation people. But it's, How many crashes? There's usually one a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> things, <laughs> things happen. Yes, they do. But it's it's cool deal, and there's a big tie in the space mission stuff. And this year... Uh, so I take my, my dad and I go now and we take uh, my two older kids and we always make a couple days out of it this year. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, the Amazon guy, he'll be there mm-hmm. with his space capsule. I think it's called blue horizon. So that we're going to see that I, space travel. I mean, that's all going to be stuff. And <clears throat> I mean, that's going to be in the next few years in our lifetime, probably, but it'll probably be a regular part of our kids' lives. At least I think it will. So right now I'm reading a book. It's called uh, Cyclops, and it's by uh, Clive Cussler. He writes these series of books about this character, Dirk Pitt. It's like an adventure guy. Uh, did you ever see the movie Sahara, Matthew McConaughey? Yes. Yeah, I have. Based on, it's based on that character on those books. Oh, and anyway, um, in this particular book, there is a group of very powerful individuals from every branch of government in the United States who behind the scenes created their own space program and colonized the moon uh, and did experiments for like like 25 years. And then it, the Russians got wind of it and, and it was a, you know, there was basically going to be a war for the moon. Uh, and I'm, I'm not done with it, but it's terribly fascinating stuff. You know, how yeah. they got up there, how they lived there, the technology they made to stay up there that long. It's, uh, it's really cool. What year is this set in? 
This is set in mid eighties. Oh, uh, was yeah. the book written in mid eighties as well? No, I um. This particular one, I don't know. So, I've started reading backwards. Uh, I started with the first book he ever writ, uh, wrote and started going forwards. Uh, and I think the first book Clive Cussler wrote was it was in the 70s. And I haven't moved that far forward. Uh, but this one, somebody gave to me as a gift. So, I don't even know when it was written. I may be reading them out of order now. But uh, the book is set in the uh, early to mid 80s. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it's cool stuff. Normally, this guy is, and it's interesting. So, the book is not all about space. It's somehow that space program got tied into a shipwreck in the Caribbean. Um, this guy, Dirk Pitt, who's the main character of the book, is um, he works for the National Underwater Marine Agency, and he's constantly investigating shipwrecks and how that all ties into history and all that sort of thing. And this time, it ties into space somehow. So it's uh, it's all over the place, but it's really interesting. Hmm. What you read a lot. I mean, do you do you tend to read more um, fiction type stuff, or do you read for education? Like, what do you have a pattern? Uh, so I read on airplanes, and I'm on an airplane every couple of weeks, so I've always got a book with me on an airplane to pass the time. Uh, before before I had kids, I read a bunch of magazines, which is why I know a lot about. I know a little bit about a lot of things. And I read everything, like import tuner magazines, off-road magazines, boats, hot rods, muscle cars, just anything to get my hands on. I just read. It was interesting to me. Uh, and these days, now that I have kids and, you know, a YouTube channel and cars to build and all that, I don't have time to read at home unless I'm on the toilet. Uh, and mm -hmm. so usually I'm reading a book on an airplane or, you know, on the toilet till my legs fall asleep or one of the kids comes and finds me. Yet another reason to have that washing toilet to give you a little <laughs> more time. Why is the water running? Boy, Mike's been in there for about five hours. <laughs> Another minute. <laughs> just, just Have I ever told just you just... my uh, my leg falling asleep on the toilet story? Yes, this was the Craigslist thing. Like you're. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> that must have been an off-air story then. <laughs> uh, no, uh, and I don't know if I've told this on the show or not. But um, when I, I was in New York when I was going to college, and when I graduated, I took a road trip cross country. Uh, and uh, back to California, where I was born. And we stopped in Arizona on the way back. And we're staying with my buddy, uh, my buddy Frank. And we're in his apartment. And my girlfriend and I are sleeping on the floor of the apartment. We had been out drinking. And so at like 2 in the morning, I had to pee. And Frank and his girlfriend are in their bedroom with their dog. And I go in the bathroom. I sit on the toilet. And there's a Reader's Digest sitting there which I don't know if you kids even know what that is. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but it's a magazine full of stories. And so I start reading a story and just fully get into the story. And the next thing I know, I don't even, probably half an hour went by. And I go to stand up and my legs are so asleep that I fall down into the bathtub. Still before the I had a chance down to everything. pull my pants up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I fall into the bathtub, boom, and just wake up the entire apartment. Dogs barking. And I can hear them calling my name, going, you know, Mike, where are you? And But I'm in the tub with my ass in the air and, you know, no pants on, so I don't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't say a thing. I just sit there, dead silent. And I sat there for like 10 minutes. Until they all finally went back to sleep. I could hear him talking like maybe I walked down the street to the bar or something. And it took probably another 20 minutes before I could get my legs working to get myself out of the bath. <laughs> and I pulled my pants up and crawled back into the into the living room, laid down next to my girlfriend. She's like, what did you do? I'm like, ah, nothing. She's been out walking around. And now you're a huge star. <laughs> <laughs> So stay in school, kids. <laughs> stay. <laughs> Moral of the story is Reader Digest. Bad. Reader's yeah. Digest caused me to fall down in my tub. Let's let's do an email here and then uh then we'll move on. This uh, whole show has been about toilets. This one ought to get it off the John. Uh whoop. Hang on. That's how you know we're doing this live. For God's sakes. Oh, I'm gonna have to take that one later. Alright, this is from Andy McCurdy. 
Andy says, uh, guys, I have finally gotten caught up on the podcast and I wanted to share a few thoughts I had. First of all, paint a charger like the General Lee? Heck yeah! And I bet the attention that car would draw uh, would get great fans of the show and fans of Chargers too. Just be ready for the attention of fans who want to get pictures with the car. Uh, he's, and I'm kind of skipping through here. He says, I can somewhat understand why people are offended by the Confederate flag, but this is a TV car, not a racism item. And I think we chatted about this in the last show. Yeah, we um, have a lot. It's, it's just, you're going to run into people who have no idea that's a TV car. They're just, a lot of people are professionals at being offended by things. They look for stuff. So yeah, yeah FYI. you're right. That's a good way to put it. Um, professional wusses. Professional wusses. Uh, show format, I love it. Don't change a thing. But what should you do after the Dukes? I think Knight Rider, A-Team, Airwolf, MASH, possibility of chips, Smokey and the Bandit in depth, which we already did, Gun, 60 Seconds, Bullet, Fast and Furious series, Catch Me If You Can, not the Leo DiCaprio version, though. Oh, I thought that one was good. And on and on and on. Uh, time to end the novel, Andy McCurdy. Um, I look forward Thanks, to the next Andy. show. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, we'll never run out of stuff to review. Since we did, what was that awful film you made me watch? Magna, uh, Magna Flux. Uh, Mega Force. Mega Barry Force. Bostwick. Come on. Daily, I get an email from somebody with five movies they want. Five, I, I'm just. I've, 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 One of them, Mega Force, because we can do that again. <laughs> no, no, that one's. I'm not even gonna say it out loud. <laughs> that's a never. Oh, that's a never well again then, type thing. Boy, have I got something for you later. Um, later. Barry Bostwick, though. Barry Bostwick was in a movie later uh, with Leslie Nielsen called Spy Hard. Oh, yeah. There is some line of thinking that the orange 68 Charger in Spy Hard might just be the very last screen used generally ever. Oh. And it's it's out there somewhere. It never made it back to Warner Brothers for use in the TV reunions or the movies or anything. Uh-huh. And the, maybe I shouldn't be sharing a lot of this here but there were two general Lees left that warner brothers kept and the other 17 were sold one of those general Lees is just disappeared into the ether dun 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 mm-hmm. it could be that one out there maybe i got it if you had it i would just be so upset i you wouldn't tell me that you'd be happy for me <laughs> no i'd be very upset you hadn't told me about it <laughs> no i have no charge Oh, I like junk, though. So, no fooling. I'm really hoping that on the off chance there's a, a 68 or 69 charger that I find on this trip. I'm, I'm kind of preparing myself for that to happen. I hope that Did happens. You a car? I hope so. Oh, dude. If, if one shows up on this trip, I'm, I'm going to try to put it together. Oh, you need to the, come find me when you're in Virginia if you are driving around in one that you bought. Well, here's the thing. I'm going on a family vacation after that. We're going to Washington, D.C. for like four days for a real family vacation. So if I buy that car, uh, can I give it to you to keep for a while? Or, uh-huh. or send it to your house or something? Or I bet that corn dog could hook me up too. But I'm I'm trying to get myself ready to like make a purchase if it's the right thing. I hope it's out there. Um, that would be so right. Somebody sell Kibby the car. So that you can leave it at my house for a little while. Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna skip. What did you drive? And we don't have a burning Bernie today. And uh, I'm also gonna skip our newest segment called "What's the best soothing white noise sound ever to put you to sleep?" and run that next week. And we're gonna Are move you on. Skipping what did you drive because you didn't drive anything. Oh, I was just skipping it to to move on. But we can do what did you drive? Okay. Mike, what did you drive? My '55 Chevy. Yeah, Actually, tell it's me. Never gone. Bit. Yeah. Oh my god, I am so sorry. No, I wanted to hear all about this because that does have something to do with uh, what you're doing today, right? Yeah. Aren't, aren't you getting yourself ready to go maybe get a license? Yeah, so today I'm attempting to go get an NHRA competition license, mm-hmm. which I've never held before. Never needed it. Didn't have a car fast enough that I uh, would need one. This is an uh, under 10 seconds thing. You legally have to have it? Yeah, if you run 999 or quicker, you need to have a license. Uh, and then you need to get the chassis of your car certified and all that. And so today, uh, I'm going to go attempt that because the last time out in blasphemy, I made the laziest pass ever and it went 1022 and 135 and there was a lot more left in that car. And I thought, well, all right, we're close enough. So I'm going to put some new gears in it 
because uh, what I discovered the last time I drove the car was that I'm ending up in fifth gear well before the finish line of a quarter mile drag strip. And fifth gear in that Tremec Magnum Trans is overdrive. It's a point eight zero overdrive, uh, which what, is not why. Cheap. Why do you have that transmission in that car? Uh, I like stick shifts, and I can drive it down the highway in sixth gear. Yeah, going and 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 I know that's. I mean, it's it's kind of a. It makes it drivable, but I mean, it's it's getting fast. Right. I mean, yeah. Oh, and it, what chassis things did you change? Because this car didn't go straight before. Yeah, the car never went straight. So for those of you that don't know, we're talking about my 1955 Chevy Bel Air, which has a Jim Meyer racing uh, tube chassis in it and a straight front axle. And the car is built with a gasser style, which is a class run in the late 60s for cars that ran on gas. Uh, some of them were supercharged. Some of them were not. But they're straight axles. The nose of the cars are lifted up into the air. Uh, back in the day, the tire technology sucked, and they did that for weight transfer and trying to gain more traction. So my car is built with modern parts so that I can make it semi-reliable and drive it down the highway every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it looks like an old race car. Uh, and what did I change? You're right, because it never went straight. I have done a bunch of work. I changed... The rear springs, um, it's got a set of Viking coilovers on the back, and we changed the 350-pound springs that came with the car down to 150-pound springs. And then I bought a set of tires that no longer rub the quarter panels, and that was the big part. Oh, but that's was, a big help. Yeah, the, so the width wasn't the issue. I had plenty of room for a wide tire, but what was happening is the tires were ballooning at high speed. They were growing, and they were touching the front of the quarter panel, and that was what was causing the car to dart left and right on the racetrack. And did and you have so, uh, video evidence, or did you just look like it's rubbing, it's got to be that? How did you diagnose this? If you go back to the Roadkill episode uh, where it's called Roadkill Takes America, I forget what number it is, but I drag raced the car against a Hellcat in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and there's slow-mo footage on the starting line of the tire hitting the quarter panel. <laughs> <laughs> and so I bought smaller tires. I went from a 30 inch diameter slick to a 28 and a half inch diameter slick. Excuse me. And that fixed everything. And suddenly, before then, I'd never gone wide open in the car because it just wanted to crash. And so now I can go wide open. And there's still a bunch of work left to do the car. Like that Magnum transmission is rated for 700 horsepower. And I make well north of that. And so. At the wheels, you make like eight, yeah don't you it makes 800 at the wheels and at some point that trans is going to explode so i've never launched the car very hard like i launch it at like 2500 rpm and i granny shifted trying to keep the transmission alive and it went 1022 and so tonight i'm going to launch it really hard and pray the trans stays together and try to get my license which what i have to do is make multiple hole shots a half track pass and then i need to go from start to finish in under 10 seconds and they'll give me a license so that's my goal today and then at some point i'm going to take that trans out of the car and put it in one of my other cars because it's going to explode and you know that would suck put it in that el camino you have yeah the wife doesn't want to stick in that car ever since we got the firebird because the firebird has a four speed in it yeah. she loves driving that and she likes the idea of the el camino staying stock like she would even prefer I take the forge lines off that car and put a set of chrome rallies on it because then it would look like it did when her grandpa owned it, you know, when it was new. I understand and that, but it looks tough with those forge lines on it. it I don't do it. It's rad. Yeah, it's that, rad. Was, but that was a good choice. My definition of rad and my wife's are wildly different, though. Yeah, she's going to win. <laughs> nope. Hasn't won yet. <laughs> There's still no paint on the car. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, she will win. Yeah, eventually. Women have ways. Happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. That is for sure. Well. <laughs>